Bonjour people and welcome to another review and surprisingly it's not a Transformers review this time it's something else. This here is the original Black Series Sabine Wren from Star Wars Rebels and this is a rare occasion where I actually have access to the box that they came in. Hooray huzzah! Um, before we look at the figure then we'll take a very quick look at the packaging. Let's just pop her off to the side and get this in focus. So this is or was standard Black Series boxing now. It's, it doesn't look like this anymore, especially the, the modern, newer versions, I should say. Uh, this is what she came in, uh, open window. You can see artwork of her there. It says Sabine Wren. You go around to the side. She is number 33. Uh, there's a bio there. Pause it and read it if you like. One, two, three, going away. And... Uh, Red trim, nice, lovely, and um, that's the box. So, moving back to the main thing that we are reviewing here. This is Sabine. She is uh, the size of a deluxe class transformer. And this was the very first Black Series figure I ever got, and I love it a bit. She is the season one design. Obviously, if you are familiar with Star Wars Rebels, then you should know that Sabine goes through various iterations uh, over the course of the series. This is her season one look. In season two, she changes her hair colour for a uh, a lighter blue. It's her worst look, in my opinion. And she adopts long sleeves, so armour becomes primarily orange. Season three, she gets an epic haircut. Uh, white that blends into purple at the tips, retains the long sleeves. A few more utilities here and there. Armour becomes a darker purple. And then in season four, the hair turns black with purple tips, still long sleeves, uh, even purpler purple <laughs> and uh, more yellow accents. Now you can tell that this is the original version of the figure because it does not have a photorealistic face. There were some re-releases recently, really, um, of her and maybe the entire Rebels crew, but... They, they've, they've been experimenting with photorealism for a while now. But this is not this figure. This is the original with the more cartoony face. And you can kind of see it here. You can... It, it Obviously, that's not focused. That's as focused as we're going to get, folks. Um, you can kind of tell it's not realistic, which is kind of a step away from what Black Series tries to achieve because it, it generally is more... This is what a character would look like in live action, or it's as close as we can try to get to a live action representation. Now, for the time, this was really good. Obviously, the photorealism face that's come out with the re-release is arguably a thousand times better, but I still have a soft spot for this original one. So, focusing on the face, you can see the big wide eyes, uh, the pronounced eyebrow, I suppose, but um, dark bluish hair, bluish purpley, uh, orange highlights, along the, uh, the front uh, coming down you've got purple collar armor here you've got her infamous checkered shoulder pauldron here and her orange one with an art deco that changes every season um, season three and four it became a convoy owl or convery however you say it this is an anuba i think i think that's what this species of doggy is called in star wars uh, her chest armor is it's not traditional mandalorian armor mandalorian armor usually covers the midriff as well but hers is more of a breastplate and you can see the the Starbird insignia there, which was later adopted into the Rebel Alliance logo. Sabine kind of came up with that retroactively, I suppose. Uh, you've got white strips running along this side, and obviously the chest armor is broken up in a traditional Mandalorian way. There is a scene going through the middle which suggests that these two pieces are separate. They are not all one interconnected thing. Um, notoriously, the season one Sabine is the short sleeve version. Um, it's kind of why this is my favourite design and of, of all her iterations this is my favourite one uh, so short sleeves you've got the, the gauntlet which is uh, splattered with paint because she is an artist she spray paints a lot of things throughout the show um, the body glove pattern that is along her midriff here continues along to her back and up to her shoulder blades um, the the body glove 
does have a very interesting sculpting into it. I'm hoping that you can see in the reflection of the light source here, but you've got like cloth texture. I mean, it's, it's obviously plastic, but you've got crinkling and creasing is what I'm trying to get at. Um, so kudos to Hasbro for coming up with that. Uh, on her utility belt, you have a com link here. Uh, and then you obviously have the holsters and in this one, uh, we'll come back to what's in there. Uh, the brown cargo pants also have this uh, crinkling to them, which is quite nice. And the pattern here almost reflects the same as the body glove uh, pattern here. It's almost as if it goes all the way down. And to that effect, a season four design, the change of the cargo pants to black. And it is more of an effect as if it is like a one piece thing. But here it's obviously not. Uh, her kneecaps uh, are armoured. This one has the white strip like her chest plate does there. This one does not. Uh, and her boots, they have like an ankle guard thing there, which is the same purple as up above. And the rest of her boots are covered in the same paint splats as her gloves. So... For just a general design and attention to detail, superb. And, you know, as this was my first Black Series figure, I was blown away by the level of detail that they had on this. Um, now, accessories. Sabine comes with her Westar guns. Uh, Westar is like the, the brand, if you will, that Mandalorians tend to go for and we'll be extremely lucky if we can or oh, we can focus there we go so even the gun has some interesting detailing on it it's not just a like a gray brick sort of thing there is molding in here you can see the pattern work going on so the smallest thing here has a very interesting attention to detail she obviously comes with two of these they can fit in her hands her hands are sculpted so that her four fingers will go through the triggers and they can also fit in her holsters uh one thing i will say though i think one hand holds a gun better than the other uh yeah you can see here i think her left hand holds uh, a gun better because when you get like a top down sort of view this one's at a bit of a weird wacky angle this one is a bit more straight so that's just a little something and let's just show to prove even though you're not in doubt that the the guns can go in the holsters nice and snug and it's a very secure fit coming back to this this is actually her paint spray and just like guns this actually has a lot of detail in it. You can see all these buttons here. That would be for the multiple colours that she would pick. Stand up. Uh, there's like a trigger on the front there. Nothing much on that side apart from a seam. Um, but yeah, that's a really nice little detail as well. They didn't have to include that, but they did. Uh, last thing to go over is her helmet. Now... It is a soft, well, it's not even really a soft rubber, it's a hard rubber. And this helmet is notoriously difficult to get off and on her head. And it's not helped by the fact that the, the rangefinder passes through the side. And you can see that grey dot there. That's the joint of the rangefinder that can go up and down, classic Mandalorian style. But because this is such a tight squeeze on her, you do run the risk of that little dot carving into the side of her head now i have been trying to mold this one for several months i've actually had it on a different figure to try and get it into a shape so that it can easily go over her head so let's try yeah and because i've been molding it it's going on without any trouble whatsoever so i do suggest try and mold this helmet by having it on a figure that you're not very concerned about getting damaged because again that gray bit does run the real risk of damage happening but anyway here she is with her helmet on um it's not the best helmet just because of the material it's made of but um it because of that it squishes quite a bit and it really does look a bit cartoony compared to the the quote photo realism of the rest of the figure so it, it's a pity like if they could have found a way to do the helmet the way that they've done Bo-Katan and Cosca Reeves the modern Mandalorians it would have looked a bit better they're not this 
fleshy rubber that you can like pinch and reshape they are a static thing but they are molded much more better for the heads um i don't think this was the first attempt to do a mandalorian helmet i'm sure Boba fett figures and Django fett figures existed before sabine here it's it's just it's a shame but it's not the end of the world it doesn't look awful but it does look a bit bulbous compared to everything else that's going on here but it doesn't limit her articulation in terms of articulation she can go 360 at the head she can look up a uh, a decent amount there she can look down a decent amount uh she can go 360 at the shoulder she's got uh extremely good shoulder articulation there the shoulder pieces are rubber so they will go over her collar pieces to allow that articulation unfortunately though you can see this right hand one i fear that it might one day fall off it feels like it's starting to come off a little bit there's more her sleeve is a bit more visible on that side than it is on that side she can go 360 at the elbow she's got a lovely uh double joint there uh, she can go through 60 degrees at the wrist. Uh, this wrist, and I'm hesitant to do this because it's such a small peg, but this wrist can go up like that, whilst this wrist can go in like that. So there is a little bit of a difference between the two. Otherwise, the arms have the same articulation. She has, She can turn at the waist. She could do... Uh, I suppose she could do 360. She has... Uh, she can tilt her torso back that far and look down slightly you can tell that there is like an ab crunch sort of thing going on there um my figure's legs have always been a bit stiff so her range of articulation in terms of her legs is a little bit limited uh to more than it should be but in theory she could split she could split more than that i think but again mine's stiff uh she can turn at the upper leg here now Again, my figure, it can do it with that leg. It can't really do it with that leg. Uh, and I don't know how to loosen it up. Uh, you've got a double bend at the knee, so she can have some interesting range of motion there. She can kick up that far. She can go back about that far before you're met with resistance. Um, and then there is some ankle pivot what you can do for more dynamic poses as well as an up and a down but you again that's another joint to be extremely careful with i think lest you run the risk of potentially breaking her i'm going to take her helmet off you got to just gv it a little bit uh, let's just examine there's no damage uh that there is roughly you won't be able to see it in great detail but that rare is roughly where that gray bit of the rangefinder hits her head uh it may be slightly cratered i don't know that's why i don't display her with it on just because it it's concerning to say the least for a size comparison then uh, i've got a few people handy here she is next to bo -Katan, and here she is next to Ahsoka. So you can see how well she scales with other Black Series figures. I have more in the uh, on the display, but these are the two I decided to uh, pick out for this. Here she is next to RC. You can see how well they display together. Again, she is the size of a deluxe class transformer. Here she is next to a random Iron Man figure that I have. Uh, this guy, he's from the original 2008 toy line, but I couldn't possibly tell you what variation he is. He comes with like this satellite backpack, so he's like a space armor, but let me know if you want to review, because I've got actually a few Iron Man figures. Uh, despite being like the same size class, Iron Man here is about half a head taller. So there we go then, that's the original Black Series Sabine, a fantastic figure. Full range of possibility, uh, lovely paintwork everywhere. Um, the helmet is a little bit of a dud feature, but you know, just, she looks better without it, to be honest. Um, because I've got this figure, I don't particularly feel the need to pick up the, the reissue with the uh, photorealistic head, because this one's good enough for me. Uh, definitely get 
any version of Sabine Renry can. Uh, and I hope that the Black Series will eventually release more iterations because she's had so many designs over the character's history. It would be ridiculous not to. So thank you everybody so much for stopping by and checking out this video. Like and subscribe if you haven't already and share it around to help out the channel. And until the next time, see you all later.